been a long time. So we can get done right now. I gotta answer your questions. And we can get into some in deep boxing shit. Okay? Cause you know I spit the real. Nobody doing it like me. First off, cause I wanna make it a long, 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 long video. We gonna kick it off right. Birdo, Victor Ortiz. HBO's low ball. They don't want to kick in the money the way they're supposed to. So we might not even get the fight. While we all excited about the fight. There's somebody stepping up to fight Andre Berto. But here's the case. Berto's been trying to make fights. We had Berto Cotto with all these things coming into play. But promoters, pay-per-view situation, and all this red tape is getting in the way of what we really want to see. And that's just the fights. They want to put it on the con pay-per-view that's on uh, April 16th because they really have no date for it. So they can do it. So they got to do a double header. Now here's the problem. Amir Khan doesn't have an opponent. Peterson, the guy who chose that he shouldn't have been fighting in the first place that I took all the heat from because Kel Brook, the guy that pretty much self-advertised, you're fighting in your own country, okay, in England. Why not fight a guy when they're offering you $1.5 million? But I know why you're not fighting him. But why not fight him for $1.5 million instead of fighting Peterson and you're not even getting 900000 for fighting Peterson? It's not even making sense. And Peterson wants a bigger cut of the pie and he's gonna pretty much pull out because he knows his bargaining chip they're not they don't have anybody to replace him so they negotiating with Peterson to see about getting him more money because they don't have any options McCloskey is uh that guy Paul McCloskey the, the Irish guy he's great he's a great fighter he's an exciting fighter I would love to see him on HBO and uh, some of these fights here on Friday Night Fights or something so people in America can get to see what kind of fighter he is they have some of his fights on YouTube. This guy's, a, you know, he's got some quick upper body movement. He throws some good body punches. And he's entertaining, but no one knows him enough. And HBO is not going to take that fight. So, for everybody thinking they're just going to replace the fight, HBO's not taking it. So, that fight's not going to happen. Now, I did get some questions about the rehabilitation. I mean, not the, the rehydration, in other words. The rehydration clause. I came up with rehydration clause. Okay, it didn't exist. There's a clause in contracts to keep people from hydrating that you could get in certain contracts that keep you from hydrating at a certain amount of weight. Like they, they normally do it by percent, and you can't come in 20 percent over the weight or this and that, just for the safety of the fighters. But it had no name. I called it the rehydration clause. I did that, so y'all owe me money. <laughs> Not in patent, but I should have. Like, I came up with Marco Cheeto, and people just ran with it. And now look at it. Everybody think they invented it. They've been using it so long. But, the moral of this story is this. I am working on the video, but I want to get all the evidence. Because it's an investigative video. You know, it goes into my section of the where you can look up the links. I'll put the links in there and everything, so I want you guys to see the work I put in to go and get all the information right. But yeah, I'm still working on that one. I got it like pretty much halfway done, but it's gonna be a great video. It's not gonna be that long, but you don't know work was put into that video. And I'm still doing the Floyd Bob thing. I, I got that on the side. Like some videos I do, I already have done. Like the videos you're seeing now, these videos been done for a while. I'm just putting them out now to y'all so y'all can get them all. So if you think I just sit around and do a you got all this time on your hands. I was in a car accident for a lot of people didn't know I've been off work for a week. So I've been at home. So this is what I've been doing. Just putting the videos out that I already had done. And then working on the ones I'm doing already. Now... We ain't gonna worry about Manny Pacquiao and uh, Donnier situation because for those who's not even aware of it, let me fill you in. Donnier's wife is upset about what's going on with 
Team Pacquiao because she wants her husband, you know, she's pretty much his manager and part promoter. She wants him to get more exposure and he should be getting like uh, like the kind of bigger money, but he needs to be in bigger venues like on some of the Pacquiao cards. She doesn't understand why Donier isn't on the Pacquiao cards, which would make sense to me. And Bob Arum's excuse of, well, we already got one Filipino, we don't need two Filipinos on the cards. You know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. You put one on the card to, you know, get some exposure so people can see him. But he wants to separate the cards, and that's fine by me. I'm, I mean, that's their business. I'm still going to watch the fights anyway. I know who the better fighter is. So... But she believes that this is the work of MP promotions and, you know, Teddy Pacquiao because Donier isn't on Manny Pacquiao promotions. That they're purposely keeping Donier off these cards. But Bob said, no, it's his fault. And that's that. But it's a little riff in between the two companies, but it's been kept quiet because they don't want a war with the audience that they really don't have. Because most of the Filipinos are very stupid when it comes to Don Yeah, I hear them say, oh, well, he's not really Filipino, you know, because he speaks English well. He moved here when he was like six or seven, but he's born there, so he's Filipino. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not like that. I mean, the man, he's a flip, so give him his respect. And the other topics you guys brought up a lot of it was like repeated questions so if you, your question didn't get answered here it didn't, I felt it got answered in the video that's why I didn't answer it <laughs> right now because people I thought I'd do these and go man dude what's going on and yes I will be doing a business of boxing I will redo that and do some more videos about the business of boxing just like I did the boxing biggest dummies so if you was going to ask me that question, I've answered it now. Okay, we're going to hit the 8 minute mark of this video. So I want to let you guys know, um, I talked to Lou DiBella, and he was talking about his boxing diet, and I was just explaining to him on Twitter. I'm Carcino at Twitter, so if you want to go to Twitter and find me, that's where I'm at. You can check the timelines. Um, me and Lou just pretty much talk about the sport. Him and Kevin Leo, we just talked about the sport of boxing, but I was saying, hey, when it was good, you were eating really good, you helped make it this bad. So, when it's not going in your favor, don't say, oh my God, boxing did it to itself, and it's these promoters, and I've been, no. You've done your share with everybody else. You joined the whole, whole with these people. And then when they made allegiance with other people and you were outside that circle and your cake got smaller, now you got a problem. So it's hard to find no mercy on those guys that did that. It's like, hey, I'm with you, but you got to, you know what I'm saying, you got to kind of swap some grit too. You know, you just can't say, I ain't had nothing to do with it. Look where we at. It's not fair. Peace.